Hey, everybody. Welcome to the last day of March 2020. Uh, I think we could be happy. Maybe March is almost over. <clears throat> I hope you are doing well this morning. It is. Um... Oh, hold on. A little technical difficulty there. Um, March is uh, done after today, so we can move on to April. Although April Fools, um, please don't trick me. I'm not good with April Fools. Um, I wanted to show you Clara Parks is doing something called the Daily Respite. And um, I loved the one from today. Uh, it's not actually about yarn. She is a knitter and a yarn person, but the daily respite is just about uh, her sending something small in your inbox every day. Um, she just started it a few weeks ago and it's been lovely. And today she had a CSUS quote that said, the future is something which everyone reaches at the rate of 60 minutes an hour, whatever he does, whoever he is. That it was a great quote. And this was the image that... She sent with it, which I think maybe these are pussy willows. So if you're interested in Clara Parks's little email, um, I think if you just Google Clara, go to her website and you should be able to find the daily respite. Um, sometimes she sends really funny videos and sometimes she sends um, things like this. So enjoy that. Um, and this is actually... Here is her latest book. While we're talking about Clara, um, she does great work for uh, wool in this country. And this book is really fun. So if you need something to read now, um, Vanishing Fleece by Clara Parks is uh, really fantastic. She also wrote Knitlandia, which is another really great book. But this one is about um, the subtitle is Adventures in American Wool. And it's all about... Um, uh, the wool industry in the United States. And it gives us a really good picture of what that um, wool industry is like. She actually, there's a whole story. She bought a bale of wool and used, had it turned into yarn at four different mills. And so the story is really fun. So it's a great read. I highly recommend it if you need something to do. Uh, and I also think any way we can support our wool industry as users of wool is really important. Um, hi, you all. A bunch of you have been popping on. That is fabulous. Um, happy. Oh, I almost said happy Monday. Whew. Happy Tuesday. Marlena Robin from Ontario. Sally from just down the road from me. Um, good. Hi, Nan. Glad you're here. I love your handle, by the way, Nan. I am a Doctor Who fan, so... Um, hi, Missy and Sue. Hi, Angie. I'm glad you're here all the way from Wales. Uh, great. Okay, cool. She, um, Angie's going to uh, work on a new weaving on her hokit loom. Hi, Maud from Quebec and Michelle from Texas and Joanne from Michigan and Karen from Sky, the Isle of Sky. I love thinking about you there, um, Karen. So thank you for coming. Um, great. I'm glad you've been looking into the Fibonacci series. Yay, Nancy. I'm glad you made it. Wendy from also just down the road in Boulder. Uh, cool. Kathleen from Vermont. She's working on the meet and separate on a smaller piece. Good work. Karen, Jennifer from California. Thanks for coming. Hi, Donna. Glad to see you. Donna does fantastic things with all kinds of art. So if I could remember her Instagram handle right now, I would put it in there, but follow Donna Wynn. Leslie cut a piece off the loom yesterday. Yeah, somebody's been weaving. Michelle, South Carolina, Alabama. Hi, Billy. Good morning. Tapestry Knitter. What a great handle. That's fabulous. Hi, Jocelyn and Linda in Chicago and Morris and Karen in Wyoming. Oh, right. Karen from, I won't say your city on the air anyway, but um, northern Wyoming. Karen lives um, in a place that's probably more safe 
from coronavirus than some of the rest of us because it's more rural. Hi, Faith. Hi, Audrey from Massachusetts. And Diane, I didn't know you lived in Nebraska now. Nancy. Ah, Lou is playing with her saffron today. So here's my... I got mine out in case we got bored with the other piece I was working on. We can um, pull out the saffron looms, which are starting to go out. Oh, my gosh. Welcome, all you guys. Linda's back from Mystic. I just love the name of your town. Matilda from the Netherlands. Thank you for coming. Um, Joanne's putting together her saffron. <laughs> Nancy's trying to catch up on design assignments. I'm doing an online class um, about designing for tapestry, and that's what Nancy's talking about. Um, oh, tap Victoria. Thank you for telling me. I'll try to remember that. Um, Victoria's from Healdsburg. Dinah in Georgia and Harlan in Louisville. Ah, Harlan's got a saffron loom also. Yay. And Nancy from Scotland. Awesome. So I'm just going to, hi Beth. Glad you made it. Um, here is my Loom, I'm still working on this today. So I'm gonna do a few more stripes. I'm having, I don't know, my camera, I'm having trouble with the camera, but hopefully you can see this just in terms of orientation. As you can, I now can see that you can see my cords and everything else. Still waiting for that camera cord to show up. When it shows up, it might be better around here. I don't think y'all really care though. No saffron in the UK, Angie. No, I might might take a while to get over there. Hi, Sally. Glad you're here. Sharon from Vancouver. And Ravit from Israel. Thank you for coming, Ravit. That's uh you get the prize for the longest place so far till I see someone jump on from Australia or Antarctica. Um Oh, Robin, yeah, we'll we'll let you know about the saffron. Um Good morning, Kate. So I'll see if I can weave while I... See what you all are doing. So I've seen that some of you have um, jumped on that hashtag on Instagram anyway. I haven't looked too carefully at Twitter recently. Oh, someone yesterday, um, it was, who was it? Jessica wanted to see the whole piece. So here, this was, if you missed a cut yesterday, I was talking about this piece. This is um, a piece I started in January because I wanted to do a word of the year. And I thought in January that I really needed this word. January and February were pretty nuts for me. And I thought steady would be a really great word. And I needed to practice weaving letters. And then I didn't... Uh, had no idea, of course, that March would be so much uh, different than even January and February. So steady is an excellent word for us these days. And I'm trying to finish this up so I can put another piece on this loom. This is a fringeless warp. You can see that's what the top of this is, is uh, the edge of the four salvage warp. So this is how much more I have to weave. And I'm just doing a little stripe sequence because it feels like it goes with the word steady. If I get too bored, I'll throw something else in here, but for now it's stripes. All right. Yeah, I don't know what's going on with shipping on the border, you all. Some of you who live in other countries are having some trouble getting your looms. Um, of course, I think everything is a little bit messed up at the moment, but I'm sure that the Aras is... Someone asked about the new Shacked loom, and I'm sure that's going to vendors all over the world, so... Hopefully some of them have gotten out. Schacht has closed their manufacturing facility right now. They, if you don't know, Schacht um, is a small company that uh, works 
that whose manufacturing plant is in Boulder. And if you're ever in Boulder, you should go for a tour of it because it's really cool. Um, but they have closed their plant for the moment to keep their workers safe, which I applaud them for. But it means that the looms that they had ready are the ones that are out there. So hopefully if you didn't get an order in, just be patient with the looms you have. Okay, so I'm doing that split weft thing again. <laughs> Nancy, good job. She figured out the chat. Um, Sharon says they adopted a dog and named him Journey. I think that's great, Sharon. I think Journey is... Not only is it a great name for a dog, but it um, it's a great word for whatever this journey is. Yeah, Robin, the shipping prices from the U.S. to Canada are insane. I will give you that. Um, I would guess that Mirax will actually stock their Canadian suppliers with the saffron loom. So I would watch for that so that you can just order it from somebody in who is right in Canada. I'm sure that they have, they have a page on their site. That's, um, their, uh, vendors, um, not, they're not called vendors. It's called retailers. So you can look and see who in Canada sells their looms and see if they have any to avoid that shipping issue. However, I don't know if they're doing that right now. Oh, see, I did it again. See, when I'm talking, I don't pay attention. The next in this pattern is supposed to be a dark stripe. So let's do that again. The next one is one. So this was the Fibonacci, one, one, two, three. The next one is five sequences. So I need a little bit more yarn. All right, this is three strands of Paris Bills Kohler Singles, who was, that yarn incidentally was named after my teacher, James Kohler. Um, oh, Sharon, yeah. So you, I'm sorry, Canadians. I did look at the Canadian conversion rate lately and um, I am really sorry. <laughs> I think when I saw it, it was like, in the 60s. So the Canadian dollar to the US dollar. That is rough. Good, Michelle. Weaving more, stressing less. I had a little mini incident last night where I was found myself a little stressed after the news. So I may not watch. I think maybe no news today. I think that might be a good Good plan. I will work on what I can control, which right now is weaving. So this is the first sequence of this. Sorry about the yoga mat under this. It is it is quite helpful. It keeps this from sliding. Um, if this were a normal world, I would have gone to Target and gotten some of that sticky shelf paper. That would be the color of the table, but it's not a normal world, so you get yoga mat. Hey, if any of you are in the chat from Canada, if you could look at Sharon's question about... Um, do you know if there's a Canadian supplier for nylon threaded rod? The hive mind, you guys. Super helpful to utilize the people on the internet. Robin clarifies that the though the exchange rate is bad, the price of the saffron loom is not bad. It's just that the shipping is um, so... 
So, Raft to Canada, my little um, untangled book. I'm still looking for a wholesaler in Canada, but um, the book is is twenty dollars U.S. and the shipping to Canada is nineteen dollars U.S. So it's a book that weighs eight ounces. The package is less than a pound. It's crazy. Okay, I'm working on. I'm going to speed this up a little bit. Five um, sequences. So I'm doing a Fibonacci series. Five sequences. Since I did one, one, two, three, the next in the series is five. And that will just give me an interesting stripe. Of course, if I had done this the other way, I could have done the colors um, with the Fibonacci and the dark color as a static line, like the same size. Or I could have altered both of the both the stri colored stripes and the brown stripes. <clears throat> Yes, Robin, the yoga mat, yoga block. So up there, um, this blue thing is uh, also my yoga block. So they also help keep the loom from sliding around. Use what you have, people. Use what you have. That is going to be our new mantra, I suspect. So I'm picking the second shed. Some people call that the pick shed, I think. If I'm wrong about that, let me know somebody. But this shed is open, so I can slide my hands in easily from the this rod at the top. And this other shed is the pick shed, which I have to pull the threads from behind. This piece is, seems to be wonky. I'm not sure if it's me or an optical illusion. It's Seems to be a little bit off kilter there. We could measure that to see about three inches. Oh, it's actually not, it must be an optical illusion. Now I have forgotten how many, um, how many sequences I've done. So you can always push it up. I've done one two, three, four. Let's see. Is that focusing? So I'm counting here. One, two, three, four. Same thing here. One, two, three, four. So you actually have to count two warps next to each other to count the sequences because, of course, one is covered in one sequence and one is covered in the other. see how's that still waiting on that longer cable if I get a longer cable I can probably set this up so you're not on a diagonal <clears throat> that was four One of the nice things about the fringeless warp, of course, is that even when you're at the top of the shed, you still can, um, you have enough warp to manipulate what you're doing. Oh, this was the last one. Okay. That goes a little bit long. Just gonna splice this again. So how many of you have learned <laughs> to use Zoom over the last couple of weeks? I can tell you that I don't invest in individual stocks, but 
had I known this was coming, Zoom would have been a good company to invest in. Uh, oh, great. Thanks, Nan. Easier to see the warp on the blue. That's You're probably right, actually, that because this is darker, you can see it. Good. See? Then I won't even change it. Um, yes, Kathleen, I do have on my list to show you the um, Aras and the Lily. So this is, oh, the Lily Loom by Schacht. Um, yes. Let me make a note on that one because if I don't write it down, we'll remember. So my Aras loom did arrive and it is still sitting in a box. Um, I believe all the cooties have died on the cardboard, so I should be able to get it out um, soon, though I can't promise when I will have it together. I'll probably do a little video like unboxing it. But um, once I open it and see what's actually inside, I'll decide whether I want to do that live or not. <laughs> okay, so we have five sequences, putting the next split. This is that split weft outline. And the reason I do that is because look how sharp those lines are. Of course, if I didn't do it, there would be these beautiful gentle waves in there, which would also be lovely. So. It's not that one or the other is right or wrong. Okay, now we can go to my, back to my colors. I think I will, maybe I will wrap this one. Some decisions are fairly random. Robin, yes. Every time I teach, I do bring that little untangled book. If the world goes back to having weaving conferences, I'm sure that I will be at some at some point. Um, hopefully with copies of my new book. which comes out in October. So that was a big shift in color. I didn't know how that was gonna look, but. <laughs> I, I didn't even realize, Jennifer, the color of my yoga mat um, goes well with the stripes. So I'm using these two colors. <laughs> mixed together in this yarn I just put in, which is quite a difference in value and hue. I'm just gonna go with it. I think it'll be interesting. The um, chameleon of colors, this red violet, is really fun to play with. If you have any red violet yarn, it will change um, the hue of all the colors next to it. It is, It itself will change um, depending on what's around it. It's quite fun to play with if you geek out on color theory a little bit. Try some red violet. Okay, so this is again gonna be three sequences. Just orienting myself. Um, hi Ellen, glad you're here from Michigan. It's great to hear from you. So um, I'm not super good with names you all, but sometimes names pop up that I've seen at conferences and workshops and stuff so I remember visual stuff better so if you wove something at a workshop that I was teaching I might and you showed me that I, I probably would be able to place you better than from your name oops Right. Oh, Marsha, that's interesting. Um, she said she ordered some Weaver's Bazaar and their shipping rates have gone up. And I imagine that that was a response to the global 
thing and the Brexit stuff and um, the pound isn't doing well versus the US dollar either. So um, in past, the shipping from Weaver's Bazaar in the UK has been um, amazingly inexpensive. But I want them to stay in business. So order from them, even if the shipping has gone up. So they're trying to keep it all, as we're all trying to keep it all together. It's a pretty scary time for small businesses. So be kind to all the small business owners. And a lot of businesses are small businesses, even if you don't realize that they are. So understand that some places you order from might just be one person or they might be just a few people and that their bottom lines are floundering right now. So just be nice. Everybody's stressed. Um, thanks, Donna. I'm glad you're here and doing some weaving. I actually like that, Sharon. Sharon was mentioning how Sayori weaving, she's been getting into Sayori weaving. And I don't know a whole lot about it, but there's a, there's a philosophy there about there is no such thing as a mistake. And I think this might be a good time to adopt that in your own work. Just weave and um, let's not worry so much about the finished products right now. I think the process might be more important than the product at this time, at this time. So I think that Sayori um, principle is a great one. Hi Robin, glad you made it. Another Robin, Robin, this Robin from New York. Michelle, I agree that um, for me, at least Zoom works better than Skype. And I have been using Zoom for a while. No offense to Skype, but they're going to have to up their game a little bit. Oh, Linda, that's a good question. So Linda's asking what smaller um, looms like the saffron are used for. And to be honest, she's, she's saying, let me back this out a little bit. So this loom, um, finish size, I guess, I think this is probably true that Merrix is saying that the finish size is five by eight and this is five inches wide, but the loom is eight inches long. And honestly, I would never weave a piece eight inches long on this loom because um, the higher you get towards the end of a warp, you lose your shed on a loom like this. Um, unlike a loom like this, which is why we do the fringe list this way. You still have a shed. So for me on these kind of looms, this is a pretty small loom for me. I probably would only weave a piece that was, this is five inches wide, maybe three inches high because I don't want to lose that shed. Other people though have used this loom as a, um, like a Navajo style loom where they weave all the way to the bottom and all the way to the top. If you do that, you're going to have to weave down from the top a little bit and make it meet in the middle. But, um, Small pieces, small tapestry diaries, little lap pieces. Um, there's all kinds of small things. Linda, I have a lot of information about what I call my tapestry diary on my loom, on my blog, and there's a lot of examples there. Um, let's see. Let's do this. Ha, Wendy, that's not a fair question. Wendy asked me how many looms I own. I have no idea. If we're counting my sort of big floor looms, I have three large ones and one baby Mac. So let's just say four. I don't know. I have lots and lots of pipe looms and um, lots of small looms like the saffron. Uh, lots of hoket looms. I'm a loom collector. If we if we counted all the small looms, I bet I have fifty looms. Oh, wow, Kate, that's something, yeah. Kate had a family member die um, this week, and 
they're doing a Zoom service. Her priest is doing a Zoom service and that's, that's really hard. It's, um, there's all these stories about people getting infected because they went to the funeral of someone who died. And that's, that's tough. I mean, I'm glad that a service could be had. Um, and a lot of those, you know, people are dying for all kinds of reasons. We can't forget that the hospital beds are already full of people who have heart attacks and cancer and other things. And so, uh, Evelyn, hi, Sweden. <laughs> Linda, did I start earlier today? I don't think you're losing it, Linda. I'm just going to go out on a limb and say that. But um, I do start at 1030. I have I had another live feed yesterday and this information might have gotten confused, but I'm doing 1030 mountain time every day. So on the half hour, uh, that's so I can sandwich it between Zoom yoga classes, <laughs> to be honest. Um, my new book, sure, Michelle. Um, my new book is called uh, The Art of Tapestry Weaving. And there's a tiny bit about it on Amazon already, uh, except I don't think the cover has been decided on yet. And it's out in October. And it is a tapestry techniques book. It is a comprehensive 350 page hardback tapestry techniques book, which is built on the um, teaching that I do in Warp and Weft. But I found as I was writing it that it's actually not easy to it's a lot easier to show someone how to do something in a video than it is to write concisely how to do something. So there are something like 500 images and illustrations in the book because that's what ma makes it clear. But it's um, published by Story, S-T-O-R-E-Y Publishing, which is part of the Workman Group, and it'll be out in October. Welcome, Stephanie. Glad you're here. Um, thanks, Diane. I'm glad you like the Untangled book. So this one. <laughs> I just gave away my yoga pants secret, too. How many of you are now living in yoga pants? If you are and you didn't before, you know what it is to be self-employed. Um, this is the Untangled book. So this is a self-published book that I was talking about having difficulty sending to Canada. Um, it's just um, a tiny little book with um, illustrations by my cousin about various things. So this one I'm selling myself, it's on my website. Um, a Crafty Sheep's Guide to Tapestry Weaving. It's adorable and it has some good tips in it. And my cousin, Molly McNeese, the illustrator, is um, she's hilarious and her illustrations are really funny. Um, oh, Catherine asked why the red violet is so changeable. Um, it has to do with a simultaneous contrast, Catherine, where, which is a, just a principle of color theory where colors influence each other. But the red violet seems especially influenceable and it has something to do with the fact that it's a tertiary color it's between a primary and a, or it's between two secondary colors so it has a bunch of the colors on either side in it oh my goodness sorry oh, there's too much stuff here but okay i happen to have a color wheel here um so here is let's see so a color wheel, red violet is right here. Actually, this is a new color wheel to me, so I apologize, but red violet's here. Um, so the primary colors closest to red violet are violet on one side and red on the other. So it's between a primary color, um, a secondary color, which is violet, and a tertiary color, which is red violet. And so it has aspects of violet and red in it. And so for some reason, it may have to do with the value also. It is a color that you can really um, play with a lot. It will, um, it will change. It is like a chameleon. Um, I wonder if I can make that bigger there. Anyway, that's a little 
beginning thought on that. Um, thanks for pre-ordering my book, Jennifer. That's so awesome. Um, oh, that's a great, thank you, Stephanie, for saying that. If you are an ATA member, remember that, um, and I know Marsha is, and I'm sure she did this, but, um, if you're an ATA member, remember that, uh, Weaver's Bazaar has a discount for ATA members. So make sure you use that to offset the cost of increased shipping and, um, keep ordering if you can. Angie is, I agree, Angie, sh Angie's in the UK. Weaver's Bazaar is great and they need support just like everybody else. So if you need yarn, I mean, come on, we need yarn, right? Order some from the UK. It's a beautiful yarn. Uh, yes, Catherine Weaver's Bazaar also has a really nice uh, tensioned loom. So look at that while you're looking at yarn. Uh, Devra, I'm glad to know. She says um, her weave, the two inches she wove last night is so much better than the rest of the piece since I started watching this every day. Good. Sometimes it's nice to just have people to hang out and weave with. Uh, Robin, are you asking about this one? I think you must be. Um, which loom am I showing now? This is the, uh, let me switch to this. This is um, a copper pipe loom that I made myself in my garage. Um, this is, I think, the last one I made. So I had a, um, oops, sorry. I had a moment where I um, wanted to start this piece in January. And the loom I have that is this size, which is, right now it's a couple two and a half feet or something extended uh was in use and i didn't want to cut off the piece that was on it so i just went to the garage and made another one copper pipe loom there are instructions on my blog and in the fringes class and in the little looms class um about how to make those pipe looms they're great because they're really simple but they have tension the tension is the reason you would do it uh, Jessica, I don't know the discount. I think it's 10%, but I'm just guessing because most people who have an ATA discount, it's 10%. If you go to the American Tapestry Alliance on their membership page, you can find out. Yes, that was the saffron. Um, Robin, this one. This one. I have two cameras. <laughs> That's the saffron. I'll bring that up. I'll um, figure out what I'm going to weave and show you that one in another day or two. Um, Marie Kondo, <laughs> Sharon. Marie Kondo would be shocked at the number of looms I have. My excuse, Sharon, is that I'm a teacher. And so a bunch of those looms used to be loner looms for when I was teaching classes. Um, also, I do a lot of demonstrating on looms. So I um, like to show different looms, why you would use different looms. And then people send me looms sometimes, so I can't be blamed for that. Can't be blamed. Um, all right, you all. I hope that you can keep weaving today. I will be back tomorrow. Um, Great. Thanks, you guys, for ordering the Untangled book. I appreciate it. I do have a shipping discount right now if anyone wants a copy. I'm trying to think of what the discount is. It's from now till the end of May, I think. And I think the code is weave it with an exclamation point. It'll be in my newsletter again on Thursday. Yeah, we're all wearing our home pants. I know. This color wheel, I better tell you, Linda, because I won't. Otherwise, let's see. Linda wants to know what color wheel this is. This one is the Creative Color Wheel at creativecolorwheel.com. This other one I also have not played with very much is, uh, I think, a, another one that I've seen around a lot. Um, the Color Wheel Company, I'm looking for a URL. I got both of these from... It's colorwheelco.com. So colorwheel company, but it's just colorwheelco.com. 
which is right. Oh, that's not going to focus, but um, I was going to say I got both of them at the Woolery. I'm not positive about that, but I think they, I think I did get them from the Woolery. Or you can get them from the Woolery. Those are just two. I didn't know anything about them. I just ordered them because my favorite color wheel is this one and you can't get it. Um, Johannes Itten, the color star. This has all the um, overlays for the different um, color harmonies. It's a fabulous tool. But um, it's uh, out of print and it has been out of print long enough that if you look it up, people are charging hundreds of dollars for this tool. I stopped bringing it to my workshops this year because I'm afraid it's going to disappear and I can't get another one. I did see someone sort of make their own, like take this idea, take a color wheel and make an overlay of their own, which is a great idea. Um, it's just a similar concept to these. These are trying to do the overlay all with one, you know, rotating thing. And the it and color wheel just has separate overlays for each of the color harmonies. Um, but you could certainly make your own. It would be a great exercise. Yes, Robin, this is the, um, woo, backwards. Okay, this loom is the Mirex Saffron loom. Awesome, Jennifer. I can't wait to see it. Send us a picture when you get working on that saffron piece. Um. Yes, the discount is 10%, Jessica, from, um... oh, that's to the British Tapestry Group. If you're a member of the British Tapestry Group, which there are a lot of Americans who are a member of that amazing group, go look at their um, website. They have a 10% discount also to Weaver's Bazaar. Robin, Maurice Kondo says, as long as your item brings you joy, you're good. I'm not sure that they always bring me joy, all the looms, because I end up tripping over them. At some point, I need a shelving system for my looms, you know, like a library for looms. And I need to give some away. So it is four. Um, Jessica's asking how many of these teeth are per inch. It's four. If there were eight teeth per inch and you went around each one, your set would be 16. I'm not sure you could make, I mean, these are metal, so you probably could make them at um, with eight of them per inch. Of course, then you could warp every other one and still get ADPI. So I know Merrick has talked about maybe um, expanding the dents that they sell for that, but Kate, we all have excuses to explain the number of looms we have, but the truth is we love them. Kate is my truth teller on this um, live thing. You are right, Kate. Um, the truth is, is that I love them. And so Jim Hokett, I sold Hokett looms for a long time. And they're those beautiful little wooden looms. And he would occasionally stick some in the box that had like turquoise inlay or that were just amazingly gorgeous. And I have to admit that many of those ended up in my personal stash because I loved them. Uh, Lena, welcome from the Ukraine. Fantastic. It's really fun to have people from all over the world. Um, oh, good, good point, Linda. Um, the thing I'm talking about with the color wheel overlays, if you get Deb Menz's um, book, Color Works, in the back, there is actually a color wheel that has the overlays in it. So that Color Works book is really great. It's for um, fiber crafters. I think uh, it has been out of print for a while because it was an interweave book. So interweave press has been bought by somebody else. I think Random House, if we could encourage them to reprint that book, um, I would be really happy to see that in print again. Color Works by Deb Menz, M-E-N-Z. Fabulous book. Um, you can probably get a used copy without too much trouble. Yes, I agree, Nan, that Color Works has, yes, the Deb Menz book, Color Works has is a good one. Um you guys all came up with that 
Dead Men's Book. I was talking about, oh no, that was in my other, I did a live Q&A yesterday for the design class and I was talking about um, Color and Spinning. Dead Men's is other book, Color and Spinning, which I must have put away, amazing. Um, also out of print, but if you're a dyer, um, fabulous book for the, um, if you use acid wool dyes. You guys, I go weave some more and I will see you tomorrow. I will see if I can finish this piece and um, maybe I'll get something started on this loom. And I could pull out a couple other little looms to show you. And I'm also still working on the hot flash piece. So that one will not be in renditions, but uh, a different piece will. So I will... I will see you tomorrow. Yes, Sheila was saying she wishes Sarah Sweat's book, Kids Weaving, would be reprinted. Same issue that the publisher, um, for whatever reason, wasn't invested. And I agree that that Kids Weaving book is really great. Um, yeah. So yeah, Dead Men's book, Colorworks, is out of print. It has been for a while. Um, and I did not actually, oh, see, that was in the other thing too. I had a picture of Deb Men's in my presentation yesterday with the other class. Thanks you all so much. I've taken up way more of your time. So just go weave and I will see you tomorrow. Same time, same place. We'll see how much I've done in the meantime and, uh, stay well, stay home, learn to cook. That's another thing that, who am I kidding? I'm not going to learn to cook, but, um. Y'all are great. We will see you tomorrow.